The other day, around 1 a.m., I woke up with this weird feeling, and I switched on the webcam on my 3D printer, which was running a long print. At first, it looked like the camera had moved askew, because I noticed that I could see a lot more of the back of the printer than I normally could. Then it hit me. The printer itself was moving across the table. Well, I ran downstairs quick enough and managed to catch it before it fell off, but it made me realize that this was potentially going to be an ongoing problem. On a vigorous print where there's a lot of back and forth from the head, it was basically wiggling it just enough where millimeter by millimeter it was taking it off the front of the table. So I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to show you how with zero 3D modeling skill, you can use something like Paint from Windows and 3D Builder built into Windows 10 to create yourself a 3D model to solve simple problems like this. Basically, anything you can break down into 2D components, you can model in 3D. And this is a really simple way for anybody who doesn't have the experience yet to go ahead and make something. So here's how I did it. Alrighty, so first we're going to get started by using paint. Now I want to create a bracket that's going to hold my printer bot Simple Metal in place while it's running so it doesn't end up falling off the table. So the first thing we're going to do is set the properties of the image that we're working with. So we'll go to properties here, and I want to create a bracket that's 4.5 inches by 4.5 inches, so I just type that in there. And this represents the bracket that we're going to make. So now that that's been created, I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with gray. Gray is going to be our middle layer color. Uh, the next thing I want to do is create something that represents the bracket that will actually go around the printer bot, so the walls that are going to hold in place. Since I know that the printer bot is uh, 3.8 inches wide and I want to have 0.1 inches on either side, we're going to create a square that represents that bracket that is 4 inches wide. So we'll go ahead and switch to white, and we'll go ahead and resize this square. Okay, so once that square is created, we're going to go ahead and drag it, we're going to put it in the middle of our bracket here. Next thing we're going to want to do is create a, another square that represents the printer bot itself. So I'll go ahead and drag it out, and again, that was 3.8 inches. Again, we're just going to want to position this so it's centered within our white square on the left side. Okay, so now we're going to go in and fill in. So this represents dead space or empty space, and the white represents the highest point in our model. So this is going to be what's higher than everything else. Then we'll go ahead and go back to black, and what we're going to do is put a diagonal line on the side here. Rather than having a square shapeless bracket, we'll go ahead and put a corner on the edge of it like this. The other thing we're going to want of course, is some place to put in some screws, so we'll go ahead and put a screw hole just like this. Now what I like to do to guarantee symmetry is simply at this point highlight the top part, copy it, paste it, then we'll go ahead and flip it vertically, drag it down into place so it matches with the top, and there you go. Now at this point you're going to want to make sure that your model is pretty much flawless, so I can see there's actually a white line running down the side here which I'm going to want to get rid of. And there we go. Now we cut off the bottom parts. So as I said, the black represents any place where there's going to be vacated space or it's not going to print anything. So here's where the printer bot will be. So you can kind of visualize how this 2D map represents the 3D object. High point, midpoint, and then nothing. So at this point, we'll go ahead and save this. And we're going to call it the printer bot holding bracket. And now, we're going to want to go ahead and launch 3D Builder, which is a Windows 10 application. So now we've created a new scene, we'll go ahead and add, load from image, and go ahead and select the one that we just generated. At this point, we'll switch from contour to height map, which is what we've just created. And you'll see it actually pretty much makes it right off the bat. So at this point, we'll import the image, and you can see there's our layers. There's the light gray, the white, and then the black shades off to here. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this block on the bottom. So we'll go to Edit, Split, and what we'll do is move it up so there's barely anything left because our plan is to raise this white part up significantly higher than the gray. So we're going to want to stretch this. So we'll go ahead, Split, and we're going to keep the top. 
At this point, we'll go ahead and do a resize, click the up arrow, and drag it into place. At this point, you can make your final adjustments for how tall or thick you want your bottom part to be. And split. Finally, we'll go to the object, we'll settle it. And finally, what we do, save as, save it as an STL file or an object or whichever format you want to use. And there you have it. There's our 3D modeled piece ready to go. Uh, all we have to do is print it and put it in place. And we're done. All that's left to do is import it into Kira. Now at this point you'll get a feel how long it's going to take to print and how clean it's going to look and if there's any other adjustments that you're going to want to make to it. And here's the completed print. As you can see, it turned out pretty much the way it was pictured. Uh, we've got this nice solid bracket that's got no give in it. It's got enough height that the printer's not going to be able to skip out of it, and enough depth that it's not going to be able to slide its way back out of it either. The two screw holes are a little bit larger than they need to be, but I'll so settle that by either reprinting the model with a smaller hole, or just putting a wash over the screw that I'm putting into the table. So I hope this helps you. There's plenty of opportunities where something simple like that, done in five or six minutes, will solve a problem that you may have in terms of making a bracket for something or support for something. There's literally an endless amount of applications for it, and it's a good step towards 3D modeling. What you'll find is when you get into actual 3D modeling software, it's not that much different. You're just drawing all three dimensions at the same time. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, you can do so in the corner, and I'd be glad if you did. Alrighty, thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you guys again real soon.